Hi guys, in the last video we reached this stage in our A minor program and we were able, we are now able to discern between the different loops while and for and which one is more suitable to our specific application and we also know the difference between break and continue and now what I want to do is take this program to the next stage and here in this video, what I would like to do is to package the core of the program itself into uh, better than it is here. Because here, sort of the core of the program is basically this here. But I've got a lot of other stuff here, which is basically not really related to the program itself, but more to the user inputs. And I would like to, you know, sort of separate the core and package it, package it separately. And let's get started. So first of all, let me just copy this uh, application and take it to the next cell. That's the beauty of Jupyter Notebooks. You can have in each cell a sort of a mini program. And uh, let's paste it in here. So now what, I, what we're going to do in this video is basically functions. Because what functions do, they're basically a means of packaging uh, certain modules or certain elements into a sort of a independent package that you can you, you must define once but then you can call an infinite number of times and this is exactly what we're going to be doing here we're going to create a function with of the core of our program and then we're able to call this function as many times as you want and it will work way faster than uh, you know, each time inputting, inputting, inputting from the user, we just can call the function hundreds of time, times in one shot. So um, the first thing, when you define a function, let me just take off what we don't need, which is all of that. When you define a function, it starts off with the word function. Then you, you give it a name, a minor, and then within parentheses come in the parameters that this function needs. Some functions do not need any parameters, some need multiple parameters, and there's so many different ways of defining parameters. I think I'm gonna cover that in the next video. I'm just In this video, I'm just gonna turn our specific application to a function, and then we can discuss functions further down the line. So what do I need for my function here? Well, I just need one parameter, which is basically user age, and that's exactly what I'm taking. Right, that's user age. Now, some functions, or most functions, or I don't want to say most, let, let me put it this way. There are two ways of, of, of functions working. One, some functions just output something, like in this case, this function would just print. But a far better way of, of having, in my opinion, a far better way of having your function operate is to have it return something. So basically, you it's sort of like a box, like a black box, you input something and return something. Then it's up to you whether you want to print that stuff that is returned or not. That's why it's preferable to have functions return something, makes them more flexible. Whereas functions that just print makes them quite inflexible because you cannot use whatever they print as a sort of a variable. You know, they, you don't have a variable with what they print, they just print and that's it, you lose it. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to have the functions return whatever this text is. So it's not going to be printed not by the function at least, but it's going to be returned by the function. And then somebody can do something with that with that variable. And that variable is user description. Let's put it here. User description is the text that this function outputs. Initially, this user description is, is nothing. It's, it's an empty string. And this is what the function will ultimately return. And like I said, In my opinion, that's just my opinion, it is preferable for the function to return something because then whoever called this function can do whatever they want with that return value. In this case, user description, they can print it, they can use it in another application, they can use it, use it in another function, it doesn't matter. Whereas if you just have a function which just prints, it is pretty inflexible because you cannot use that or whoever called the function cannot use that any further. And that's why I prefer if, you, if the function returns something. Right, so now we have, the only thing what we gotta do is basically convert println or basically assign that to user description. And um, 
Let's start with this one here, user description. And while we're at it, I can show you how to uh, concatenate, uh, let me just take the parents of the println off, uh, how to concatenate strings. There are two, three ways of concatenating strings in Julia. One way is to use multiplication. Basically, that's the first part of the string. And now I want to concatenate the usage. And the usage is basically multiplication. And then I can just have the usage converted to string or ensure that is string. And then another multiplication and that uh, concatenated with years. So basically it says while you're an adult and this gets concatenated uh, to the user age. So while you're an adult with your whatever the user age is and then years. So that's, that's the, what, the first uh, user description. The second user description would look like this. Again, user description equal. And the second, let me just take the parent off. And so the second way of concatenating would be to put it all in one string. And that would mean like this. And um, user age, i.e. the variable in this case, that would get a dollar sign. Similar to PHP, for those who know PHP, it is, so now this is clearly the variable or a variable, whereas the rest is just static text. So that's the second way of concatenating in Julia. And the third way would be like this, user description. And equal. And this is a, is a big, a sort of a string method. And what we did here, basically, we just replaced println with string, the string method. And this is basically stays all the same. So basically here uh, we have a sort of a tuple, if you wish, or a sort of a series. And all of that gets concatenated together by this method string. And what this function does, it just returns then one of these depending on the user age you input. Now remember here, um, because we are using the parse method, from, from before, because before up here, uh, we needed the parse method because user age is being input as a, as, a, as a string, as a text, as a string. So we we're parsing that first to int64 uh, and then, you know, checking it against the 18 or 15 or whatever. And again, here we just kept the parsing. So that means that when I call the function, I have to call it with a, with a string not with a number so basically i you know because of this parsing and i don't want to change it now let's just keep it i have to call the function a minor uh, not like this but like this i have to input a string so that's that's my first call then another call would be like this and uh, again string let's say uh, Seven, and then another call would be like this so now we have three calls and the reason I need, again the reason I need to put them within uh, quotes i.e. to pass as, as strings as arguments is basically because of that because we're parsing here and so it won't accept any numbers right so now these these are already three calls to the to the uh, to the to the function uh, a minor, and now let's run it. And you see here, it is just passing. It's just showing the last one. It's just showing it as a sort of an output. It is not really an output because we're not actually printing these. If you need to see the outputs properly. You need to print these and we can enclose these in print lint statements and then you should be seeing all three so and now if we run these uh, see you see here now we see all three outputs and you see here the beauty of functions is that you can do multiple calls I mean let me just let's just let's have some fun and do some more calls so now I have so 
So now I have like six calls and you see, I just defined it once and I can call it multiple times. And there you go. I can even, I can even go like this and have a loop. And here a for loop would be, would be, would be great. And I can just call it for i in one to twenty, and then uh, a minor, and then you know call it call it. Um, So, uh, oh, uh, we take it like this, um, print lin, uh, a minor, and then don't forget to, I need to convert those i's, those i's are ints, I have to convert these two strings, so basically string i. So basically what this now does, and I need not forget the edit. So what this does is basically it loops through the range one to 20, takes each number, and prints and calls a minor with that number and prints out the result. And if we run that code, you see now it says O being one means a minor, etc. etc. At 15, it says you're a teenager, minor, minor, and then you're an adult. So you see now I can call this, I did call this function 20 times way faster than, um, you know, um, uh, calling, calling that function with, um, you know, individually or calling this program individually the way we did up here so that's the way that's that's one way of uh, or that's advantage put it this way that's the advantage of using uh, functions um, right so i think i'm going to keep it this at this in this video we can improve our function a bit in the next video i'm going to show you a couple of things about it and yeah see you in the next video and by the way if you like these videos on julia and enjoy these so don't forget to subscribe or you know like those videos if you if you find them useful and you know or else you know i just like to have some uh, constructive feedback in the comments on what what could i do better or you know uh what did you find good what did you find bad but i, I prefer constructive videos instead of you know like uh, you know uh, in certain, uh, constructive comments, I'm sorry, constructive comments, so, you know, I can improve where I need to improve.